Hi, my name is Lila and I'm the Mini Witch. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going over the top five non-technical painting tips to make you a better painter. So what does non-technical mean? It means that these tips don't relate to your equipment, your models, or any certain skills that you should learn. Instead, these look more at your viewpoint and mentality towards mini painting. The tips we're going to go over in this video are looking at miniature painters and drawing techniques that are different than what you usually do, looking at every miniature as an opportunity to try something new, examining and deconstructing other miniature painters' works, the idea to stop waiting for inspiration and motivation, and lastly, accepting failure and looking for feedback no matter what. The first one is trying techniques, styles, and guides for miniature painters whose techniques differ from your own. I'm a patron of Ben Comments. He does mostly bust work, but he also sells busts, sells glazing cards so that you can look at the different consistencies of your paint, as well as obviously releasing videos for his patrons on the miniatures he's painting. When I first began watching him, he was using a technique called loaded brush. And I looked at that technique and said, that is beyond my skill level. I don't know when I will get there or if I will ever get there, but I'm definitely not there now. The idea of loaded brush is that you load up your brush with a first color and then dip the tip into a second color. And what that does is it's going to literally blend the paint together as you are painting. And I always looked at that and just thought that sounds complicated and I'm just not ready to try it. The other day I was watching one of his videos and again, he was using the loaded brush technique. And I thought to myself, if I'm not going to try out this technique, I'm really just wasting money. So I decided that I would finally give it a try. And you know what? It's great. It's like the universe of mini painting has opened up to me. I Secrets, the Illuminati, everything suddenly makes sense with this technique. And once I'm good at it, I will be doing a video on it, but I'm, only so-so at it. But the point is, if I wasn't willing to do this technique that's so different from what I normally do, I probably never would have tried it. And I, I can just feel it that this is going to be a big breakthrough for me. And I'm really excited to continue pushing myself. Next is look at every miniature you paint like an opportunity to try something new. This is also a bit twofold in that you should paint less miniatures. If you are batch painting and trying to paint a lot of miniatures really quickly, it's a great way to learn brush control and learn about thinning your paints and things like that, what your favorite paint brand is, but it's not the best opportunity to learn new techniques. If, for example, I was trying to speed paint the town guard for this Sunday's D&D session, it would not have been a good time to learn the loaded brush technique. And I probably would have just gotten really frustrated because it wasn't what I expected, wasn't what I needed, and I would have felt like I had wasted a bunch of time. But if you look at every miniature like an opportunity to learn something new, you're far more likely to be more relaxed in your approach and more relaxed to how you do on that miniature. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be something big, like a new technique. Perhaps you could play with colors. For example, if you're doing blue, Perhaps you could highlight that blue with a lighter green instead of a lighter blue. Or if you always have the same recipe for how you paint gold NMM, try using that coppery tone instead of that more traditional gold that you, you always go for. You won't be able to find and learn new things that you've never done before or have never ever been done before if you're not trying new things and experimenting. To go on with trying new techniques, accept failure, and always look for feedback. When you're trying new things, you're more likely to make mistakes or have your miniatures not turn out how you expected them to. Perhaps you were trying out NMM and you ended up realizing that your highlights and shadows weren't deep enough, so you had to continue building, and now you've ended up with a bunch of texture. That doesn't mean that this miniature was a failure. What it means is that you now have a better understanding of how to do NMM. 
Really, you can never fail at miniature painting as long as you analyze and try to pick out where you went wrong and use that as a learning opportunity. Lastly, find a group of people that you trust and show them your miniature, even if you feel like it's a failure. Getting constructive feedback from your peers is a huge learning tool. Even if you think that your miniature is a horrible failure, you can still learn from other people's critique and feedback on it. So don't lock that ugly miniature away, never to see the light of day because you're too embarrassed about it. The best way for you to learn is not only to experiment, but to learn from others. Examine and deconstruct miniatures. Let's look at the winner of last year's crystal brush. This is Darnassus Aspirant by Sergio Calvo Rubio. When I look at this miniature, the first thing that I see is a repetitive use of color, specifically the pink, purple, gold, and green. If we look at her hair, we see that her hair is the same purple shade as what we see in the beast fur. If we look at the pink of her skin, that is also the same pink that's in the beast's eyes. The green of the base is also seen in the green of her attire, and there's the same goldish tan hue that you see in the gold NMM, as well as in her spear. Now, what the repetitive use of this color does is it really ties everything together. It makes everything appear as if it's from the same universe and like it was made and designed to be together. It looks incredibly natural. The next time that I'm doing a diorama, I'm definitely going to consider this when I'm thinking about how I can tie my miniature and my base together. Next, we can look at this miniature for its interesting use of texture. The first area that caught my eye was the leather and how worn and rich it looks. Next, my eyes immediately went to the saber tooth teeth and how they have that sort of worn and aged appearance. I have painted probably dozens of monsters with huge teeth like that, and I've never taken the opportunity to add that sort of grungeous texture. Deconstructing miniatures is a really great way to learn new things. You don't even have to leave your house, you don't have to pay for anything. All you need to do is use your eyes and really consider what makes a miniature work and then extrapolate on those things for your own miniatures. Lastly, if you want to improve, stop waiting for inspiration and motivation. Miniature painting is work. When we think about famous athletes, we don't think, wow, they must be so inspired to wake up every day at 5 a.m. to go to practice. That's not how it works. We understand that they have a routine, they have goals, and they work whether they want to or not. And that same thing can be applied to miniature painting if you really want to continue improving. A lot of times people use inspiration as a crutch. I can't paint because I'm not inspired. When really, you just don't want to put in the effort. And that's fine. If you just want to mini paint for fun, then mini paint for fun. But if you really want to improve and you're really dedicated to this, mini painting is work. You need to come up with a schedule, you need to have goals, you need to push yourself, and it's not always going to be fun. So if you want to get better, you need to push yourself and practice, as well as follow all the other advice that I've told you in this video. I hope that these five tips were helpful and useful for you. Let me know what you think down below. Are there any techniques that you think that I should recommend that are non-technical? If you like what I do here, you can support me on Patreon, follow me on Instagram, subscribe down below, as well as follow the Amazon affiliate links in my description and I'll make a little bit of money. I hope that this weird stage of life is treating you well. I would love to see your miniatures. If you utilize any of these techniques, please feel free to tag me on Instagram so I can see them. I would love to see how you progress. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.